Hi everyone, this is Brian MacDonald, author of Practical Stress Analysis with Finite Elements. Today we're going to be looking at cylindrical constraints in, uh, in ANSYS um, using a cylindrical coordinate system. So first of all I'm going to build a really simple model. I'm just going to use 2D elements. Here I'm using solid uh, 183, which is a simple 2D solid element. And I'm going to define um, a simple linear elastic material model. I'm going to put in properties for steel, maybe 210, gigapascals and a Poisson's ratio of 0.3. Next I'm going to um, build a simple uh, quarter circle. Um, so I'm going to go to uh, circle partial annulus and uh, setting an origin of 0, 0, an inner radius of 0, a starting angle of um, theta equal to 0, an outer radius of 0.1 and a finishing angle of 90 degrees. That will give me a quarter circle. Uh, I'm now going to mesh this. Again, keeping it as simple as possible, just going to the mesh tool. Uh, I'm going to put an area size control on that and set that equal to um, 0 0.01 meters. And then I'm going to use a mapped mesh. OK. So it's closing down the meshing menu there. And the next thing I need to do is go to um, work plane, change active coordinate system to, I'm going to change it to the global cylindrical. So this changes from the default Cartesian coordinate system to the global cylindrical. I can check that that's happened by going to the output uh, window. You can see at the bottom there it says active coordinate system set to one, which is the global cylindrical with the Z axis. Now if I just go down to loads and just try to apply some constraints onto a few nodes in this uh, model. So I'm going to apply structural displacement on nodes. I'll just pick one or two nodes here and just try and apply an X direction constraint on those. And we can't really see that because the constraint symbol is the same colour as the elements, so let's just plot the nodes. And you can see that nothing has happened. So the constraints are still pointing in the x direction. So that, that, that has happened because we haven't actually told those nodes to use the new coordinate system yet. So what we need to do is, first of all, delete those um, constraints I just applied. And then we'll go and we'll rotate the nodes into the current coordinate system, which is the cylindrical coordinate system. And that will change them from acting in the Cartesian coordinate system to acting in the cylindrical coordinate system. So we go modeling, move, modify, rotate nodal coordinate system to active coordinate system and then I'm just going to pick all to change all the nodes in this case. So now all those nodes should be in the cylindrical coordinate system. So I can go back and I can reapply those constraints. So again I'll just pick two or three nodes here and uh, just apply an X direction. And so you can see that's gone acting in the radial direction now. And again I'll pick some more nodes down here and apply a Y direction constraint and we should see this acting in the circumferential direction. Perfect. So now we have radial and circumferential constraints. So they're not acting in the X and Y anymore. They're acting in the radial and circumferential directions. So if you need to know some more about this, if you pick up my book, Practical Stress Analysis with Finite Elements, second edition, um, it's explained um, in detail in chapter um, 6. So we're looking at figure 621 in the book here. And there's some text around this which talks about it in detail, but figure 621 really shows how any point in the Cartesian coordinate system is defined in terms of x, y, and z, but any point in the cylindrical coordinate system is defined in terms of r, theta, and z. So applying an x constraint um, in, in a cylindrical system will give you a radial constraint, and applying a y constraint will give you a circumferential constraint. So again, there's more about this in the book, so please feel free to pick up a copy of the book. from It's available from Amazon and all good, good book shops. Okay, thank you very much and see you next time.